Well, ever since we started racing this car, I've noticed that it spins the tires around 180 miles an hour. So it doesn't come loose, but you can see it in the drive shaft speed. You can hear it with your ears. You can feel it in the seat. It just, it's turning the tires some at speed. <laughs> So my question was, what is the, what is the body's influence in that uh, traction at that speed and, and what we could do about it? I knew there was a wind tunnel in Mooresville, North Carolina, because I've driven past it uh, quite a few times over the years while visiting friends. And those friends have access to the wind tunnel for things like cup cars. So I wanted to bring the Supra up there to see what we could learn. So it's pretty neat when you get there. There's a small, like a, a corridor that you drive the car into and then it opens up into this big area that the wind tunnel is is in that room and the wind tunnel looks pretty wild it looks uh completely different than what race car stuff normally looks like it looks more of like a nascar fixture like a rocket laid down it's um it looks kind of like the thing in ant-man 2 that shoots you into the quantum realm like it's just it's very it was very foreign to me to look at so one of the things I learned was that the airspeed follows this rule of fluid dynamics that if you have 50 miles an hour or 200 miles an hour, you, you can just use math to figure out how the forces change over speed. You don't actually need to test in 200 mile an hour wind to figure out what's happening at 200 miles an hour. Uh, the guys up there had a pretty neat model that just scaled out uh, right up to supersonic air. The air behaves the same from one mile an hour to five, six hundred miles an hour until you start getting up near sonic and you have to deal with air compressibility and what have you. So uh, one of the cool things is our spreadsheet, when we get those forces, we're actually going to be able to translate them real easily on the spreadsheet. We've got a little area that you just punch in what mile an hour you want to see the forces at and it'll translate all them. Pounds of lift, pounds of drag, horsepower of drag. Um, lift front and rear, hmm. all that you'll be able to see in pounds at a given speed. Even though we're only testing at 85 miles an hour, you'll be able to see at 200 miles an hour what the forces look like. speed. We're about to get our first piece of data, so that'll all make more sense. There we go. When we ran the car um, just the way we brought it there, without any changes, we learned that there was a tremendous amount of lift. So the air was getting under the car and trying to drag it up off the ground. Running the car in an, without any changes and then looking at the information, it was kind of an aha moment. And well, that's why it spins the tires down track, because the the lift that the body's generating um, instead of downforce just creates less traction. My ideas were just the simple ones. You know, what, what's it worth to block the area around the intercooler off to where it, it's only feeding the intercooler and the air can't escape past the intercooler? Because when the air passes the intercooler around the sides of the core uh, or on the sides of the tank, that air is just going in to the engine compartment basically. So the more air that gets into the engine bay is usually translated into drag and lift. So the more you can do to control that airflow that comes through the, the radiator, the better off you'll be. Uh, now that you've added those nose pieces, we're at a 0 0.380 drag coefficient. In real world forces, that translates to at 200 miles an hour, your drag was 458 horsepower. Now uh, your drag is down to 415 horsepower. That was worth a um, 
effective 40, uh, 45 horsepower. What was it? 45? <clears throat> 43.7. Yeah, so 43 horsepower um, less is needed to go 200 miles an hour, which is a pretty neat gain. So I think that um, I think that the changes that we'll learn here today, even with just some really quick and dirty things, we can probably pick up three or four mile an hour in the quarter mile, which is pretty exciting. As Jeff explained, it's easy to make a change and then run the test and make a change and run the test. So we were gonna go into it with the approach of making one change at a time and seeing what, um, what it would give us. So that was an easy way that if we did something and it hurt, we could just take it right off. Changing the nose was the biggest single gain. So I knew that, well, I thought that um, we weren't gonna get another large chunk after that. We started looking at things like the windshield molding. Um, Eric had built some cardboard wickers to come off of the front fenders to see if that would change how the air uh, basically shut off the sides of the car. Um, that was a, that didn't work. It was going in the wrong direction, so we took those back off. We built a small cardboard um, spoiler for the back just to kind of break the air as it passed off the back of the car. That looked very fruitful. Um, we folded the mirrors in. Uh, we taped off the sides of the car, the side door glass of the car to make the glass flush with the moldings to see if we can clean up some of the dirtiness of the air passing over the sides of the car. That didn't seem to be of any benefit. Um, there was a small gain in taping up the rear brake uh, ducts, the little hole that's behind the uh, doors on the car. That was a small gain. Um, taping up around the um, headlight duct, you know, those headlight ducts are, they don't fit like a headlight, you know, there's a large gap on the top side, so getting that gap closed up was worth some. Um, basically, after the nose, the ride height, and the rear spoiler, those were the big contributors. The rest of it was just uh, small pieces. I don't think I've been this excited in a while. <laughs> it's just pretty cool. It's just, it's a different, it's just a, a different experience than nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. So uh, just by extending that uh, rear wicker or, or small spoiler, if you want to call it, uh, we have reduced the drag at 200 miles an hour by six and a half horsepower. Uh, also, we have increased the rear downforce by 128 pounds and increased the front downforce by 15 pounds. So all around uh, a positive change. So we finished up. We have roughly three hours worth of time in the wind tunnel today. We've converted uh, 436 pounds of lift to 157 pounds of downforce. Um, we've lowered the drag coefficient a little bit. Um, we figured out that our turbo air inlet isn't as bad as I thought, and that um, with some creative little aero mods, we end up with a better race car that should be more stable at speed. Having access to Jeff and all of his knowledge and access to the wind tunnel and just being able to go make very quick and dirty changes with cardboard and tape and, and seeing a, a difference. I mean, that was, um, that was a luxury that, you know, even not knowing anything about it, just having access to those tools, it was, uh, it was a huge value for us. So moving forward, we'll, we'll be able to see if whether or not the things we did will make an actual difference in our time slips. All in all, it was a good experience. Uh, we learned things that will help us go faster with our race program. And I'd like to thank uh, Jeff from Airdyne and Eric Yost from Customs by Biggin for helping make the day go easy.